cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in Him. And I am helped. My heart trusts in Him. And I am helped. My heart leaps for joy. And I will give thanks. How will I give thanks? In song. I will open up my mouth and declare gratitude, thankfulness, a heart that hungers and thirsts after the King of kings and Lord of lords. Let's stand in the presence of the Lord today. Father, we love you with all our hearts. We thank you that we can say as your children that our heart trusts in you. Our heart leaps and we declare in song thanks and praise.
public will not look back. We look forward into all that the Lord has for us. And as we go into a time of worship, we come seeking the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You know, later on this morning in the service, we're going to come around breaking of bread. And it's always a time for us to reflect on where we have come from and what God has taken us into and brought us out from, delivered us, the blood of Jesus, the power of the cross and what Jesus did for you and I. And this song says, He became sin who knew no sin, that we might become His righteousness. He humbled Himself and He carried the cross for you and I. Love, so amazing. That love is here today. That love is extended to you and I. And the love that took Jesus to the cross is the love that draws us each and every day to love Him, to worship Him, to honor Him, to live for Him. If you want to come and just kneel at the altar and say, Lord, I come with my life today. I come and give thanks for the cross, for the power of the blood, for forgiveness, for the very fact that I can come into the presence of God and know that because of what Jesus did, I can enter in to the Holy of Holies and worship, and worship.
Yesterday, we had a baptismal service here. And one of the truths that came out in this baptismal service was about the Ethiopian eunuch who was on his way to worship in Jerusalem, yet he didn't know Jesus, which means he was a religious man. How many of you know religion doesn't touch God? There's religion and there's Christianity. True Christianity has relationship with God. True Christianity has found God. It has embraced God. Religion is man's search for God. It's powerless. It's mental ascent. It's all about what knowledge you have in your head, how much you've learned. Even you'll find a lot of religious people even know the word more than anybody else. They may know the letter of the word, but they may not know the spirit of the word. They may not know the God of the word. And here this morning, I want us to have an encounter. It's not enough just to raise our hands and say, I went to church. Or to clap, or to stand, to sit, to sing. Hear a great message. We'll be no different to the Ethiopian eunuch. Have you had a face-to-face -face encounter with your Creator this morning? Have you entered into that deep place in the spirit? Where you, that secret place, that place where you're alone with him. That place that sometimes the enemy through guilt and condemnation says you're not worthy to go in. But Jesus pay, died and paid a price for us to get into that place. Let's not let that price be. In vain. In His presence, there's fullness of joy. I don't want to worship from afar. I don't want to just worship someone who's there. I want to worship here. Which brings me, for those of you that are new, to the Greek word for worship. It's the Greek word proskineo. And it literally means to come to God to kiss. So why would they use such an intimate word? It's, it's because worship was meant to be intimate. It was meant to be worshiping Him with all of our heart, mind, soul, which is my emotions, my mind, my will, and all my strength. We were always meant to worship from head to toe. Every part of our being worshiping Him. I want us as we go into this next song, let it be more than a song. Let it be more than just words. Let it be words that just come from the heart and words that engage God. Words aren't meant to just leave our lips just to say that we worshipped. They were meant to engage. 
It's the Greek word lambano, to lay hold of God. We're going to touch on that word this morning in our teaching. We lambano the Lord. We, we lay hold of Him. Worship is, is that encounter. It's that closeness. It's that intimacy. It's that depth. It's that secret place where everything else becomes shadows. Everything disappears. And it's just Him and I. Religion no longer means anything at that moment. Rules and regulations disappear. The power, the importance of law disappears because everything I do, I do because I love. The Bible says that all the law is encapsulated in love. All the law hangs on one word love you see if i love you i'll be faithful to you if i love you i won't murder you <laughs> if i love you i won't lie to you if i love you and it's all about love you see and so the lord wrapped it up in that one word love and so this morning i want us to forget about the person on your right your left in front behind and as we go into the song the front is open. If you receive best sitting, standing on your knees, on your face before God, however you can receive. Get, to, get into that secret place because the Lord has things He wants to share with you this morning. Get into that secret place and get alone with Him. Let His presence infect and what affect your life. Can wash Away my sin. Come on, lift your hands. Nothing but, but the blood of Jesus. And what can make me whole? Yes, again. nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash? your faith in the power of the blood of Jesus this morning. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And
because of Jesus. You made a way for us to enter into the holy place. By the crimson stain upon your robe. Hallelujah. With every nail, with every pounding blow. Jesus. Every stripe and every bruise upon your back. I can hear you crying out. And you say, Father, I desire that they would be. They would be with me to see my glory. Took all my shame and my iniquity For the sake of freedom You set me free
prayers we've been singing chains have been falling off of people chains of guilt and condemnation the lies the bondages of the enemy lift your hands and let those chains fall right off he made a way for me come on he made a way
everything become shadows look into his face let your love and your adoration go towards him this morning of your presence That as the seed of your word goes forth this morning, we'll be changed, transformed, revived, refreshed, rejuvenated, restored, filled once again with your fire and your presence. Just lift your hands and say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit 
I honor your presence. I honor your presence. I honor your presence in this place. I honor your presence in this place. I honor your presence in my life. I honor your presence in my life. I honor your presence. I honor your presence. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said. Amen. Turn around to two or three people. Welcome each other. Say welcome to City Bible Church and say to someone, you're about to have a God encounter this morning. Hallelujah. Woo. Alrighty then. We serve a good God, amen? Turn to somebody and say, we serve a good God. We serve a real good God. Woo. All right, you can take me out, take me down, uh, especially out of the monitors, please. There we go. Great to see you all. If you have your Bibles, uh, give me a little more, please. Go with me to Galatians chapter 3. Book of Galatians chapter 3. Turn to somebody next to you and say, great to see y'all. Even, even though you're only speaking to one person. Because that's how we say it down south. Amen. We want to welcome you all and especially those of you that have joined us online. We have people all across this country and around the world that's watching. It's great. God bless you as you receive from God's word this morning. And I know those, those of us that are here are going to very specially receive uh, God's word. Amen. Um, I'm excited with what God is doing in, in the church. I tell you, there's a freshness, there's a life, there's a river, there's, there's excitement. There's, people can't wait to get together and have fellowship and hang out and have fun together and attack the pastor in the swimming pool and crazy stuff like that. It's just exciting stuff. Amen? So I'm still trying to recover from that first ordeal. But uh, thank you, Jesus. Galatians 3 and verse 13. Something's wrong with my voice, Ty. Can you take care of it, please? It says, Christ has redeemed us. This word redeemed, it's the Greek word that means, watch this now, by payment of a price to recover from the power of another. When we've been redeemed, somebody paid a price to recover us from the power of someone else. Is anyone excited about that? That's great. Thank you. So Christ has redeemed us from the curse. In other words, the power of the curse of the law. How did he do that? Well, being made a curse for us. He became a curse. Jesus he, himself, when he hung on the cross, he didn't take on the curse. He became the curse. He became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God. And as much as by faith we receive the righteousness of God, and here's a quick freebie. Turn to the person next to you and say, he gives freebies in the church. Here's a quick freebie. You cannot be the righteousness of God and, and be a sinner at the same time. Stop treating yourself like a sinner and then say that you're the righteousness of God. That's kind of schizophrenic, don't you think? So we're either the righteousness of God or we're or we sinners. We need to make a decision. And the Bible says, how many of you know when the Bible, say, when the Bible says it's God speaking and maybe He knows a little more than you and I? Amen. Maybe we need to believe what He says instead of what the devil says in my head. That's right. And what the devil's saying to you and even proving to you with stuff that's going on around you. And saying, you see, you are this, you are that. No, I am who God says I am. Say with me, I am. I am. Hold your Bible up in your hand. Say, I am. It's so funny. 
in, these, in this day and age, people are holding up their cell phones, iPads. Where the days we used to hold up a real Bible. I mean, uh, <laughs> well, this is a real Bible. I mean, you all know what I mean. <laughs> That's funny, though. I say it with me. I am. I am. <laughs> I, can't even I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I have what God says I have. Okay, now let's say it and believe it this time. Are we ready? Now, now that you know what we're going to say. You ready? I am, I am what God says I am. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I have what God says I have. And here it says, okay, now I'm speaking. You don't have to say anything more. It says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. And the next verse says, verse 14, it says, That the blessing of Abraham, I looked up this word blessing, it's the Greek word eulogia, where we get our English word eulogy from, in case you didn't know that. Everything has come from the Greek, we all know that, right? And it says, it means the laudation, the praise, or the published language. God publishes, and it says he, re he redeemed us in order that the published language, pronunciation of what God said that was given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus. All the blessings that were spoken to Abraham because of him being the, uh, a chosen vessel to bring forth Christ, all the blessings that were spoken over him become ours in Christ Jesus. God says, I will bless them that bless you and I will curse those that curse you. So people better be nice. <laughs> Amen. Be nice now, right? All right. So here we go. Might come to Gentiles through Christ Jesus so that by faith. Say with me, by faith. This is the Greek word pistil, which means the act of believing. By faith. The act. I believe it. Say with me, I believe it. God says it. All together now. God says it. I believe it. God said it, I believe it, so that it says, so that by faith we might receive, say, say with me, my faith, my faith receives. receives, I receive everything God has said to me and over my life, so that it says, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit, God wants us to receive, you see folks, it's not enough to just know it here. God wants us to be recipients. He wants us to be actively living and receiving what Jesus died and paid for for us to have. Amen? And so when we worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings, we position ourselves under the blessing of God as recipients, as covenant partners to the promise of the Spirit. One of the things that follows and that's actually a proof of my believing is my honoring him in my tithes and in my offerings. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to get ready to worship the Lord with our tithes and our offerings. And uh, there's a tithing envelope in front of you. If you'd like to worship the Lord with your Visa or MasterCard, you may do so through the double doors. First desk on your left-hand side is somebody waiting to attend to you there. And also those of you online, this is the time where you can uh, get ready to press the donate button and to worship the Lord. We have people around the country uh, and around the world that watch us and actually give because this is their church because they're either out of town or they're working out of town. There's a lot of people on vacation. And so they, they, they uh, give online and this is your time to do that. Are you ready to pray? And we're going to worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings. And thereafter you may go and worship the Lord. Father, we thank you for this time of worshiping you with our tithes our offerings, to prove our believing you. Lord God, we do believe you. By faith, we receive the promise. And Lord God, as we honor you in our tithes and our offerings, Lord God, our faith, our trust is in you. You're our source. You're our strength. You're our redeemer. You're our provider. You're our health. You're our protection. And we honor you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, 
Amen and amen. While you prepare yourselves, I'm going to ask, we have one or two testimonies, where, wherever those sisters are. I know Denise is one of them. Um, that's just going to come quickly and share with us. Uh, Wednesday nights have become a hit. I want to tell you, our, uh, there's something wild and crazy happening here on Wednesday night. There's a buzz going on. And here's somebody who didn't like when, uh, that particular format, but she's going <laughs> to share with you what God has done. I confess, I did not like, if, if I even got an inclination that we were going to have a group, I was looking for the exit opportunity because to me... She's talking about splitting up into smaller into groups. small groups. To me, I sit at work all day. I sit all day and I take all day and then... And so I kind of thought of Wednesday, I want to be a sponge. You know, I was military issued, the skinny blue sponges and you just kind of watch them grow as they get wet and that was it that's it so I was driving this week and I've had this uh, tooth issue I was driving this weekend okay I got a little medication on board but um <laughs> God is like he's so funny he says let's use your word sponge let's use your word you know this is me on medication um <laughs> he says a sponge in its natural form is part of an enormous, the largest land, uh, the largest mass on earth. It's part of the ocean. It's beautiful. It has purpose as part, if you're diving, you see it, it's beautiful. But you take that out in its natural form, um, it cleanses, it um, protects. I didn't even know it's used in football helmets to protect the brain. It's a tool. It can be used as an intense of uh, utensil. It can your sponge is not my sponge. My sponge has a greater purpose. My sponge in its natural form will serve many. And I'm like, man, he's good. <laughs> Wednesday was incredible. Um, we split into groups, and I missed the first week, which I'm really sorry. I don't know if you have remedial makeup or whatever. But Wednesday was incredible because uh, I was in the build group, and I learned about the vision of this church, the building, how it has applied in my life. I've watched it build myself, my family, my daughter long before I got here, and where we're going with that. I can't wait for the other groups. I lo it was so exciting. I was buzzed all week. I cannot wait till Wednesday. I haven't felt like that in a while, I confess, but I cannot wait. It was I can't wait till Wednesday. It was so energizing, and I loved it. And I'm sorry that my sponge was boring, and God's sponge is incredible. So, <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You're ready to worship the Lord with your tithes and offerings? Let's stand together. The Bible says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. I also want to, while we're doing this, welcome all our first-time newcomers. It's great to have you with us. On your way out earlier, uh, later on, there is a newcomer package. Please help yourself to it on your way out. And if you could just fill out the card and leave it at the desk, we would really appreciate it. God bless you. Let's worship the Lord.
family, it's time for this week's announcements. We love summer at City Bible Church and lots of fun, fellowship, sunshine and good food. There's plenty to get plugged into, so come and be a part of what God is doing here. A wonderful welcome to our first time visitors today. We hope you've enjoyed the warm family atmosphere here at City Bible Church. Please pick up your free welcome package at our information desk after the service. Fill out the visitor's card in your package and turn it into one of our deacons in the foyer so we can keep you updated with all the exciting things going on here at City Bible Church. And if you're watching online today, we would love to connect with you too. Please visit our website at citybiblechurch.com and click the Contact Us link to send us your email and any information you would like about City Bible Church. Here are the upcoming events. This month we are on a mission to beautify the house of God. Every Tuesday and Thursday for the month of June, we will be getting together to clean, fix and decorate our church. We always have a blast when we get together. So if you are available, come on out every Tuesday and Thursday this month from 9.30 to 12 p.m. Our Summer of Light is heading into its third week every Wednesday from 7 p.m. And it's intensifying every week as we discover what we believe, where we belong, what we become and how we build. It's exciting and a great time of connecting with our CBC family as we grow together with the amazing vision that God has given us as a church. See you on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Radiant Women, on July the 13th, Pastor Debbie is hosting a summer tea party for all our lovely ladies at CBC. Summer dresses, cute hats and beautiful weather. Not to mention delicious tea and scones. You won't want to miss this fellowship. Grab a flyer today with all the info and invite a friend. Seating is limited, so don't delay. Come on girls, sign up today. We are going to have a great time together. Guys, we haven't left you out. All our CBC men, save the day for June 29. You'll be getting together for a day of fishing and fellowship. So get your fishing equipment. It's time for some man bonding. Please go and sign up today in the foyer or speak to Tim as you need to have a fishing license to participate at this fellowship. And all the details will be explained to you when signing up. It's time for the great outdoors, June 29th. Impact Youth this Friday night, it's time for our Back to Summer Lock-In. Get ready for a crazy night full of games, food, and there may or may not be a game of grog involved. This is going to be the best lock-in yet, so bring your sleeping bag, a change of clothes, and two dollars. And don't forget your friends, we'll see you Friday night at 7 p.m. Another great fellowship this month is our Salt Fellowship, which is our single adult living truth. They are going on a day trip to Savannah on Saturday, June the 29th. Please register for this fellowship or speak to Lisa. Children's Church Summer Program, calling all parents and kids. Please go and sign up with Ms. Shamanda, our Children's Church Director, and find out all the great things planned for the summer. Flyers are available with details and dates. Get ready for a summer of fun in the sun. If our lives are rooted in God's unchanging grace, it can never be uprooted. So stay rooted in His grace, His love, and His power. Well, that wraps up our announcements for this week. Visit our website at citybiblechurch.com for all upcoming events. City Bible Church, to know God and to make Him known. Doctors Paul and Carol Alexander have been a great influence on Pastors Errol and Debbie. They are training the next generation of missionaries in North Dakota at Trinity Bible College. They have trained missionaries from five different continents and are now beginning a postgraduate program. Carrie DeHart is with Wycliffe Bible Translators. She is doing an orality project in Southeast Asia. While learning the language, she is working on the best way to share the Word of God with people who do not read or write. Pam Dagwam is the director of Calvary International Nigeria. Pam is in the northern city of Jos, which has been attacked by Muslims several times and many Christian churches have been bombed. They want to get rid of the Christians and make it a Muslim city. Pam is reaching Muslims for Christ. Reinhard Bonnke has also had a long-running relationship with pastors Errol and Debbie. Reinhard Bonnke is an international evangelist who has done outreaches all over Africa. Matt and Nusha Reifsneider have been with GoTo Nations for 25 years. Presently, they are the directors of Islamic World Missions, and they train churches and missionaries to reach Muslims for Christ. 
and they promote outreach wherever they go. The Duggets work in Israel. They take the gospel to both the Jews and the Gentiles. Their heart's desire is for Israel that they might be saved. How many of you know that we, not just as an individual, but as a church, need to exist for the spreading of the gospel? Um, no party, no matter what party you belong to, I can say that in a church that's as multicultural and as diverse as this one, 
No party is going to save America. No amount of rules and regulations is going to save America. Spreading the gospel and Jesus is the Savior of America. And Jesus alone. Amen? And so you say, Pastor, you look real fancy today. Why are you so dressed up? Well, always know, learn this about your pastor. There's always a reason for everything. Nothing is just as it seems. And so, uh, if you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Genesis chapter 1. And the title of our message this morning is The Restoration of the Authority of the Kingdom. The Restoration of the Authority of the Kingdom. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, God... It's the Hebrew word Elohim. Say Elohim. Elohim is the Hebrew word Jehovah, Yahweh, is the word that just means the self-existent one. Um, but here it's the Hebrew word Elohim, which can be translated God's. Now that doesn't mean that there's many gods. It just means God was Father, Word, and Holy Spirit. You say, what, why aren't you saying Son? Because He wasn't the Son at the time. He was the Word. The Word became flesh only when Jesus came to the earth, right? So you can say the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. That's why the Jews struggle with, with the word Son, because Son, He wasn't the Son in the Old Testament. He was the Word. Amen? You say, Pastor, you look more like yourself now. <laughs> and there's a reason why I've rolled up my sleeves. There's always a reason for everything, because God got ready to create. And so you roll up your sleeves when you get ready to create, you see. So God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Whenever God is getting ready to create something, to do something, the Holy Spirit shows up and He's hovering. Like He was earlier on in the worship. Whenever we sense that anointing, we should all get excited with an expectation that he's about to do something for us, to us, and hopefully not in spite of us. <laughs> Amen. We should all be involved and participating with the Holy Spirit. And it says, the Holy Spirit was hovering over the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. <laughs> and there was light. God saw that the light was good. And he separated the light from the darkness. And God said, let there be an expanse between the waters to separate water from water. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. Mm. And God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants. And trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them serve as signs to mark seasons and days and years. And God made two great lights. The greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth. And God said, let the water teem with, li with living creatures. Let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number. Mm. Sorry, if we could just go to the previous one first, please. Uh, an increase in number and fill the water in the, in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds. Livestock, creatures. Uh, I like the King James. It says, it, it creeps that move along the ground. Or creatures that move along the ground. And wild animals. 
each according to its kind, and it was so. How many of you can see God's busy here? Everything he said just, just happening, you know, and it was so. And then he, he's got everything in place. He's got everything prepared. And then the penultimate of his creation. And Elohim, God's Father, Word, Holy Spirit, said, let us make man, make Adam in our image. This word image, it's in our likeness, in our icon, a duplicate, a second one just like me. And so, uh, let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, over all the creatures that move along the ground. And God made man. You know, you must stay right there. Don't move yet. God made man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So God takes dirt, right? And he, watch this now. This is very important. Don't miss this. Because this is the only creature that was made like him. No lion. They all have parts of him. They all have a something because they all came out of him. But this, he created exactly like him. God is spirit. He is going to be spirit. God has a heart, a soul. He has a mind. He has a will. He has emotions. He's going to give a soul to this man. God put, uh, 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 he, uh, he created a body in Jesus. And so he gives us a body. So he creates man exactly like him. Say with me, exactly like himself. Some of you are getting it. Some of you are realizing that you're just like your daddy. You're just like your creator. Because he made you to be just like him. And it says, inside of man... He had male and female. Originally, male and female was inside of one man. That's why he had to take the rib out and create the woman. She was in before she was taken out, right? And all the ladies said, Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 20. Let's go on. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you're free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. Now before this happened, God creates this body and the potential to rule and to dominate the earth. And then the Bible says, he breathes nefesh, ruach. He breathes, watch this, if I breathe out, where did that air come from? Inside of me. So God took of his own spirit and he put it into man. And man became a living being. Many me. Right? Now you, and so the Bible says that Adam and God walked around in the cool of the day. They talked. We're going to call that lion. It roars. Big teeth. But don't worry. You have dominion. See these trees? You can eat from any tree in this garden. All these trees are all for you. All that fruit, they, it's Good, I'm telling you, it tastes great. Try it. There's just one or two trees. Don't touch. Those trees, they're going to mess you around. <coughs> they're going to rob you. 
I've given you every other tree, just, just those two trees. The n- tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. Those two trees, leave them. You've got all the other trees. Don't worry about those two trees. Leave them alone. They there, just r- leave them and just enjoy everything else. See all these animals? You have dominion over them. You see the fish, you just call out and a fish jumps out the water. You can have fried. You say, tilapia, tilapia falls. <laughs> Haddock, Haddock will be in your hand. You know what's cool? When you say to your wife, I'm going home, what would you like? You don't have to walk around Publix for three days. <laughs> looking for what she asks for. You just call it out and it'll come to you and you eat. How cool is that, my son? And so the Bible says that God took man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you're free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, now, you know one thing I noticed which I've never seen before? And I probably read this hundreds, thousands of times. When God commanded the man, the woman wasn't even there. I actually, it was, ouch, ah. The, man, the woman wasn't even there. Because God spoke to the man. He didn't speak to the woman. Yet the, the man should have communicated, and all men are good communicators, as we know. Amen. Effectively. <laughs> right? <laughs> Come on, ladies. Let's not shirk off all our responsibilities onto the man. It's like, see, I told you, okay? <laughs> and, he's, and he says to the woman, did God really say? Isn't it just like the devil to question God's word in our lives? Are you really saved? Are you really a Christian? Do you really believe God? Are you really born again? Did God really say that you must not eat it's questioning what God said. And that's what, God, that's what the devil does. He questions what God has said to us about our present and about our future. Did God, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the servant, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. But God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. And you must not touch it or you will die. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman. Isn't it just like the devil? To just neutralize, nullify, eradicate, demolish what God says. For he knows that when you eat of it, and there's always remember when the devil speaks to us, there's always a measure of truth. There's enough truth to convince us that it sounds right, it sounds real, it's right, but it's so wrong. But it, it's, its end is destruction and destructive. But he puts enough truth in it to convince us. And it says, When you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye. How many of you know that that's how temptation comes to us? It's what we see, what we can taste, what we can touch, what we, you know. And it says, when the woman saw that the tr- fruit on the tree was good for food. Mm. And pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom. Are you kidding me? These people knew everything that God knew. God himself was instructing and teaching them. And then they want wisdom from a fruit. Is it just me that sees that or what? God himself comes and hangs out with them, shares about the universe, and now they're going to eat a fruit and know more than God. Isn't it like our lives? That there's certain things that 
we desire and we want to eat it so that we can understand it. When God has said, don't touch it. She gave, she took some and ate it. And she gave some to her husband who said, no, honey, we should not be doing this. What are you doing? No, 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 give me that. No, you, you, you don't need that. We're not eating this. We, we're going to do things right. <laughs> Amen. Uh, that would have been great if he did that. But that wasn't what was going to happen here. And who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized that they were naked. What happened? You see, they didn't know they were naked because they were clothed with the glory of God. They were clothed with an authority. They had authority. God said to them, uh, uh, I give you, go and take dominion. You'll see it in Genesis 1, 2, 3. Go and take dominion over the land of over the sea and everything in it. I've given you this land to subdue it, to control it, to bring it under your control, to, to rule. You will rule this earth like I rule heaven and the heavens. Many me. I made many me. I've created this earth something like heaven. You do here like I do there. That was the plan. So man takes that authority by submitting to the serpent and he hands that authority to the devil. And unless we have restoration of that authority, we will live our lives with no authority over anything in our lives. God has created, watch this now, God originally created us like Him to operate with authority. That's why I read all that creation part, because He was operating in and with authority, creating whatever He said was happening. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He speaks it, it happens. The seas move, the earth moves, lights Sun, moon, stars. People call it the Big Bang Theory. Call it whatever you want. It just came from God's mouth. That's all I know. Amen. I'm okay with something exploding when God speaks it out. Big Bang Theory. I can go with that, but where did the Big Bang come from? Let it be. That's where it came from. God's mouth. <laughs> and so God operates with authority, and He created many Him, that's you and me, to do the same. Now if man l takes that authority and relinquishes it, then he's no longer subduing, but he's subject to the authority that is not operating in. And we need restoration of that authority because the Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 12, to as many as have received him, to them that are called by his name, to them he gave the right, the power, the authority to be called the sons of God. And so we need a restoration of authority. So the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized that they were naked. Why? Because all of a sudden the glory is gone. The glory suit is gone. And now when we go put on Yves Saint Laurent and all these different name brand stuff, we, all we're simply trying to do is we're trying to replace the glory. As nice as any suit or any outfit, or any boutique outfit can be, it can never replace the glory. You will still be naked with your Yves Saint Laurent outfit. Because only the glory 
is what can clothe us properly. So many Christians are not properly dressed. So many Christians are still walking around naked with their Yves Saint Laurent outfit. They're still naked because there's no glory upon them, on them, and with them. So they sew fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the Lord God said to the servant, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly. He must have had legs. Quite a skinny dude if he did have legs. But, uh, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman. I will put enmity between you and the woman. Here's the first prophecy of the restoration of the authority. Here's the first prophecy of the Jesus that was going to die and crush the head of the enemy. This is the first time God gives the solution. You know one thing I love about God? He doesn't just talk about the problem. He provides and talks about the solution. And here right in the beginning, he's already talking about the solution. Listen, let me tell you what I'm going to do with you. I'm going to put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. And he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Mm. It's time. Turn to the person next to you and say, it's time for us to be clothed with God's glory and receive back the restored authority into our lives. Oh, it's time, church. Amen. Now, if you have your Bibles, go with me to this this word, uh, to rule or to have dominion, it's the Hebrew word rada. Say rada. It means to rule, to have dominion, to subjugate, or to tread on. To tread on. Have we done verse 14 and 15? Is that it there? Are we still going? Okay, keep going. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God. No. Is this the beginning again? Uh, just go pick up where, where we left off. Sorry, I hope I, I, am I confusing you? Okay. All right, go with me to, uh, are we in chapter 3 yet? Have we done 3, 14 and 15? Okay, then go to 1 John 3 verse 8. That's where, we're at. That's where we're at now. He who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. Now, there's truth to that, and that's the truth, but keep reading because it, it doesn't end there. The reason the Son of God appeared or was manifest was to destroy the devil's work or the work of the evil one. Jesus came specifically to destroy the work, the work of the enemy of, number one, robbing God's people of the authority, and secondly, sowing discord, sin, and, and brokenness, and hurt, and rejection, and pain, and guilt, and condemnation, and uh, uh, sadness, and all the things that the enemy does, Jesus, the Bible says, the reason the Son of God was manifest, appeared, was to destroy. Say destroy. To destroy the devil's work. 1 John 3 verse 9. No one who is born of God will continue to sin. In other words, we're moving from strength to strength, from glory to glory. Look at just this morning, we were worshipping and just chains falling off people, chains of religion, chains of mental ascent, and just connecting with God, having a, an encounter with, with God. That's true Christianity. Not, Christianity isn't just going and warming a seat, hearing a nice message, and going home and your conscience is appeased. That's not Christianity. Amen? 
No one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in him. As long as God's seed, God's word is in you, we continuously desire. We're in a transformation process. I'm, I'm changing. I'm being transformed. I'm being metamorphosized. It's the Greek word metamorpho, and it means to be transformed or the same way a, a, that little tadpole becomes a frog and it metamorphosizes. We all went to school and maybe, what, fourth grade? Hopefully we've all done that. And you remember the tadpole that becomes the frog? That whole process is called metamorphosis. It's the Greek word metamorpho, and it means to be transformed. And we ought to be in the state of change and transformation from strength to strength, from glory to gl glory, looking more like our Jesus every day. Looking more like the Son of God every day, looking more like one who is operating and living and thinking and walking as God's Son with restored authority. He, no one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in him. He cannot go on sinning because he has been born of God. Okay, next one. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God, nor is anyone who does not love his brother. God is looking for us to be... Folks, if we have hatred in our hearts, uh, whether it's hatred because of a person's uh, uh, color of skin or background or nationality or, or, or because you just don't like their face or whatever the, the reason is, the Bible says God's love doesn't remain in us. And we need to be changing from glory to glory. We need to be changing and allowing to start thinking like God, feeling like God, uh, 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 acting like God, walking like God, living like God. We don't need to be criticizing people. I'm going to say that again. We don't need to be criticizing people. We don't need to be looking for faults in other people. You want to find faults? Look at yourself. You'll find plenty. Amen? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen? Let's, sort, let's exercise authority here first. Before I try and exercise authority over there. Let's start here. Let's get it right here. Amen? Next one. And then it says, this is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Everything we do must be because we love one another. Amen. Matthew 28 and verse 8. Jesus came to them and said, all authority. The King James has the word power. It's incorrect. The word power is the Greek word dunamis. This is not that word. This is the Greek word exousia. Say exousia. It means authority. Now watch this. Remember, what was given was authority. God gave man authority. Man gave that authority. He gave it to, de uh, to, to the devil. Jesus came and he destroyed the devil's work he took back that authority and he said all say all all, all means all. why authority. correct all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me next verse verse 19 therefore go and make disciples of all nations in other words I'm deputizing you. I'm giving you back that authority. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And I love, I love uh, this verse in Luke chapter 9 and verse 1. The Bible says, When Jesus had called the twelve together, He gave them power, dunamis. How many of you know you can have power but have no authority? Doesn't mean because you have the power that you have the authority. That cop can be huge muscle men. When he stands in the street to stop that mad truck, that mad truck doesn't stop because of his big muscles. It stops because of his uniform. 
because of the authority that he represents. Because if you put that same uniform on a little lady this big, and this happened to me in an elevator here in Jacksonville, I went to the courthouse with a friend of mine, and this little cop lady walked in. She, she was about this big. I'm not kidding. She was the smallest cop I'd ever seen in my life. But she had all the hookups, you know. And I looked at her and I thought, what's she going to do? What, what is she going to do? You know, I, I, my mind goes there, you know. And I'm sitting and I'm, I'm standing in the elevator and I'm looking and all this is going through my mind. I'm thinking. So we got out the elevator and I said to my friend, what is she going to do? He says, oh, you don't understand. This is what she's going to do. You see that <laughs> microphone on her shoulder? She's going to call. And then she's going to have every cop in town come and get you. She's going to get the state troopers come and get you. She's going to get the army to come and get you. She will get the navy. She will get, she, with that one call, she can have the whole country at her disposal to come and get you. That's what she can do. I said, okay. <laughs> she has authority. Amen. You see? So Jesus gave them power and authority to drive out demons and to cure diseases. Right there, Jesus gave them the authority, even before he died, to show and to train them up in what they were going to be doing, to exercise authority once again, to subdue the earth once again, and, to, and the Bible says the gates of hell will not prevail against us. Amen. The Bible says no weapon formed against us shall prosper. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, it's not M16s, but they are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. Authority was restored. Jesus came, He got the authority, and He gave it back to us. And, and He says He gave them power, dunamis and exousia, power and authority to drive out all demons. How many demons? All. I'm always amazed that some people are scared of certain demons. All means? All. Why? Because that's what all means. And to cure diseases. Oh, hallelujah. Turn to the person next to you and say, this is good this morning. Go to Mark chapter 16, and I'm going to move towards a close here. We're going to get ready to break bread. Because the only reason why authority was restored was because Jesus gave his life. Because Jesus became sin, so that we could become the righteousness of God once again. He broke the power of sin. He... Uh, 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 he, he, he took on all the world's sicknesses and diseases so that we could walk in divine health and healing. Amen? Amen. And he said to them, go into all the world. Again, there's the deputizing. Go into the world. Go into the cosmos. Go into the cosmos. The, uh, the cosmos is another word for Greek. Uh, when you use the word cosmo, it's also you speaking about the people. Go into the people. How many of you know God's not interested in a physical earth? He's interested in the people that's in the earth. Yes. He's interested, watch this, He's interested in that which He created to be reconciled back to Him. Remember, we came out of Him. We're going to go back into Him. So, oh brother, that's, uh, that's a little... Uh, I don't know about that. That's, that sounds a little um, like heretical, you know. That sounds like heresy. What, what, what? Well, he is the, we are the, he is the, we are the, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. If any man be in Christ, in Christ is us going back to where we came from. In Christ. Whew. Turn to the person next to you and say, that's a revelation right there. We're only going back to where we originally came from. 
And the reason why we rule and reign is because we're seated with Christ in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We're seated with Him, not next to Him, not in front of Him, not behind Him. We're seated with Him. That means we're connected. He's the head where the? He's the head where the? Is the head and the body separated? Why do we act like the head is up there and the body's down here? We're not a monster, people. It's not a headless church. This is a church that has the head connected onto it. And it's for us to live and rule and reign. And he, he this morning, I, I want you to get ready. Make a decision. I'm taking back what the devil stole when he took authority away from me. Because I was created to live, to operate, to have and to enjoy authority in my life. Watch this now. How many of you know at least 10 people that somebody's raising their hand? I'm still busy talking. <laughs> you see weird stuff when you stand here. I'm telling you now. You have no idea what I see. Some of you think because you're facing me and the people behind you can't see you that I don't see you. I'm looking at you, people. I am seeing you when you're picking your nose and doing all your weird stuff that you do there. I see you. The people behind you may not see you. I'm looking. Me. I have to see you, okay? I'm kidding. That's funny. Now, where was I? How many of you know 10 people? That are, that are living way below their potential. How many of you are that person yourself? Way below your potential. One of the things that's going to accelerate that potential in our lives, as far as who we were made to be, how we were created to be, how we were created to live our lives on earth, is to have that authority restored and we begin to live and operate in it. I'm sorry, camera guys giving you a hard time by walking so deep in here. Amen? God is looking for us to walk. Watch this now. It's one thing to receive the restored authority. It's another thing to walk in it. And so when we go to the table of covenant this morning, we're not just saying, thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless God. Oh, Jesus, it's another, it's another badge. I'm not giving you a badge. God's not giving you a badge this morning. That badge means absolutely nothing if you're not going to use it. If you're not going to operate in it. If you're not going to begin to act like your daddy. And to subdue the earth. And to subjugate the earth. And to take control once again. Beginning here. Some people want to control everybody, but they can't control themselves. I like that guy. <laughs> Man's honest. Hallelujah. Best place to be, man. Tell you. Best place to be. Better than the self-righteous. Oh, you don't know what he's talking about. And must be talking about. <laughs> Isn't it always weird when you get these people? Did you, did you hear the message this morning? It was just for you. The preacher was talking about you. But here we're coming to the table. The table that represents the price that was paid. Watch this. The price that was paid. For us to have that authority to receive it once again. And to be able to operate with power and authority again. I want to close with the words of the Ethiopian eunuch. When Philip appeared to him and was running next to his chariot. You know how fast you got to be and how fit you got to be? Well, I think it was some supernatural stuff that was going on there. Hey, what are you reading? Notice that he didn't say, hey, slow down. There's a dude running. He's talking and he's running. What are you reading? I'm reading about Isaiah the prophet. Well, you want me to explain it to you? Sure. All right, let me climb on. And he says, 
what stops me from being, I see some water. What stops me from being baptized right now? Right now, you all seeing Jesus. What stops you? from receiving him right now? What stops you from receiving that authority? What stops you from beginning to exercise in it? You know what stops you? I'm, I'm going to say it. Oh, are you ready to cringe? Fear of failure. Fear that it's not going to work for you. Listen, you do what God says, leave the rest to him. You do what he tells you to do, exercise that authority, the rest is on him. What happens with it is up to him. You know how many things have happened in the last two years that I've exercised authority, it didn't happen, and down the road, I go, thank God it didn't happen. This is ten times bigger miracle than that would have been. Hallelujah! You see how... I'm thinking in my time, in this moment, I'm thinking like this. He's, the, he's seeing the whole picture. Amen. I'm at a place in my life where what I declare, what I command, it happens. But if it doesn't, it's like, man, my daddy must know something. I don't know. My faith and trust is still in him. Because he obviously knows something I don't know. And he's going to do something great and awesome and powerful down the road. Amen? Amen. So this morning, I want us just to bow our heads before the Lord. And those of you that are watching online, get some bread, get, get some juice. If you have grape juice, that's always the best. If not, don't get religious. Use orange juice. The Lord won't be, the Lord won't be offended. Just use something that will be a symbol of the blood of Jesus. Use something that will... Remind you of the price that was paid. I've even broken bread with just water. Because we didn't have juice. So you just take water and you say, Lord, I'm remembering your, the blood that was shed. Jesus didn't go, oh, no, no, that doesn't work. I'm sorry. No, don't bother. He didn't do that. He was cool. He was cool with that. And so this morning, I want you to get alone and ask yourself, where did I lose it, that authority? Because right now, I'm getting it back. Where can I operate and live and exercise that authority in my own life, in my own world, in my own places, wherever I go? There's a world waiting for you. The people are waiting for you to be a blessing, to help them. We don't operate in authority so that I can be a big deal. I operate in authority so I can love people and I can share the gospel and I can bring them the gospel, not just by word, but in deed. Bringing them freedom, bringing them hope, bringing them truth, bringing them life, bringing them joy, bringing them peace. That's what the gospel is about. Not rules and regulations. People don't need more of our rules and regulations. They, they're tired of it. And to be honest, so am I and so is God. We're all tired of these rules and regulations. I want the freedom that's in Jesus. And I want to walk in righteousness and holiness because I love Him. Amen. What is stopping you today? Don't allow fear. Don't allow pride. Don't allow anything to stop you today. To number one, come back to God. Number two, for you to get and take back your authority. The authority that Jesus died and paid for. For you to live and have in your life, in your home, in your marriage, in your business in your everyday life and for you to be able to bless people. Just the other day, I was in a store and a lady she was doing her job and she asked me, how am I doing? You know how they greet you? 
one thing I love about America. Be happy, folks. You go overseas, they don't greet you. They don't care about you. And they're not even told to greet you. They don't, you know. So she, she did a job and she said, how are you doing? So I said, great, thank you. How are you? She said, I'm making it. Oh, what an open door. <laughs> that was a wide open door for me right there. And I said, ma'am, Jesus died for you to more than make it. He died for you to have a life filled with joy and peace. And she looked at me and she had tears in her eyes. And I reached out and I held her hand. And I said, I'll be praying for you. Because God loves you today. And our meeting is not a coincidence. God wanted me to come through this line so I can tell you His love is towards you today. And her eyes, and she actually turned around and she said, I better stop, otherwise I won't be able to work because she was about to burst into tears. It's for us to let people know there's a hope. There's a truth. There's a... There's an answer. They're not trapped like they feel. There is an answer to their situation. And if you and I don't tell them, they'll never know. So I want you to, like the Ethiopian eunuch, ask yourself, what stops me today from receiving that authority and exercising it in my life? In my personal life with what's going on with me we all have stuff going on every single person in this building today and watching us online this you have stuff going on in your life and God has given you the authority and today he's reminding you I've given you authority I paid a price for you to have authority in these situations You don't have to live subjected to stuff for the rest of your life. We are called to take authority, not to be taken and not to be subject to other authorities. That includes the authority of alcohol, drugs, or any other substance that may have taken control of us. God has called us to be free and that authority to begin to work in us and for us. There's a powerful anointing to set people free from different habits, different bondages, whether it be alcohol, tobacco or drugs or whatever. And that includes um, prescription drugs sometimes I know people that have been addicted to prescription drugs and because a doctor prescribed it we feel better about what we drink and what we take God wants us to be free church God wants us to be free he wants he wants to be the one who gives us peace he wants to be the one that calms us down he wants to be the one that gives, that relaxes us. A great man of God once said, you know what I do for relaxation? He said this in front of 5,000 people. I nearly fell out my chair. He said, I speak in tongues all day. He says, I do that and you have no idea how relaxed I am after a couple of hours of just speaking in tongues, praying in the spirit, just out aloud. It's actually very relaxing. I tried it after that. That was... Maybe 30 something years ago, I heard him say that, and I've been doing it ever since. I tell you what, that's why I'm always so relaxed. <laughs> Whenever you get a little stressed out, just pray out in, in the spirit, out aloud. Go into a room where 
you can just be alone with God and just pray in the Spirit. You have no idea how it will help you. What I'd like us to do, we're going to try something so that we can move quickly and get our bread and our cup. We're going to go, this front row is going to go first and then we'll follow and then this side will go and then it'll start from the back and just keep going this way and then from the front again and we're going to just follow through. Now if you're going to have a moment with God, if I could ask you to get your bread and your cup, don't have a moment here because then you're stopping the line. (laughs) Come and have your moment with God here or over there. Is that okay? That makes sense, right? Because it that's what happens. People have to stop and have, they have their moment with God and everyone's standing waiting. So the idea is that we're going to move the lines quickly. Amen. While every head is bowed and every eye is closed, how many would say, Pastor Errol, I've never heard the gospel preached so simply, so powerfully, so relevantly. Today, I want to give my life or I want to rededicate my life to the Lord Jesus. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. If that's you this morning, raise your hand up right where, you are, right where you're at and we'll pray with you. If you want to give your life or if you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, raise your hand up high. Don't be shy. God bless you. I see that hand. Wonderful. Anybody else? This is your moment. You're giving your life and you're, or you're rededicating your life to Jesus. Raise your hand up high. Don't be shy. Anybody else? Wonderful, wonderful. I wonder if I could ask the person who raised their hand uh, to just slip out the aisle. We have somebody waiting for you right now to pray with you. You'll be right back with us within three minutes and you'll even be, you'll be in time to come get the the bread. We won't be long with you. Uh, God bless you. Let's, how many of us would say here today, Pastor Errol, I somehow relinquish that authority and I haven't been operating to my potential with the authority that God has given me right where you're at just raise your hand there's hands going up God bless you bless you bless you. wow there's so many people God bless you God bless you bless you bless you bless you bless you bless you oh wonderful I see those hands I see those hands I see those hands wonderful I see those hands at the back there on the side God bless you God bless you here in the front God bless you at the back there God bless you wonderful wonderful Thank you, Jesus. In fact, that's a good idea. Uh, the middle aisle, you can come out and get your, your bread and your, your cup, and then the, the side one will come to you. That's a, even a quicker way. Well, that was clever. Whoever thought that one up. These people are cleverer than I am. You see, I'm telling you, it needs all of us to run a church. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Whenever you're ready, I'm going to pray a prayer. All of us, let's pray this prayer out aloud. We're going to get back that authority. Father, today, I thank you for opening my eyes so that I can see the authority that I lost. And today, Lord, I say thank you for getting back that authority from the enemy and giving it back to me for me to exercise and to live in and to walk out in my life and father today I receive I receive I lay hold of that authority even right now in my life in Jesus name I thank you today that I am your son I'm your child I'm many you and today Lord with the help of your Holy Spirit who leads me and guides me each and every day I will learn and I will live and I will walk in your authority in Jesus name in Jesus name now whenever that's your reality you may get up come get a bread and a cup thank him like I said have your moments away from the people so that we can keep the lines going but you may come Get your bread and your cup. Get alone with God. Thank Him. And when you drink, let the authority become yours to operate in, to walk in. 
God bless you. your hands and say thank you Jesus for all that you've done for me restoring to me sonship and authority I receive it I walk in it from this moment in Jesus name while every head is bowed I'm going to close in prayer I also want to make a quick announcement we need another few children's church teachers and nursery teachers if you're interested and you'd like to know more about this or you'd like to serve even if it's once every six weeks just to go and and serve and to to impart into into children have you ever thought of the the great crown the prize that's awaiting Billy Graham's children's church teacher. Have you ever thought about that? Somebody sowed seed into Billy Graham before he became who he was. Somebody sowed seed into our presidents. Somebody sowed seed into great men and women of God that have lived. Somebody sowed seed into you. Amen. I can't say that unfortunately for myself. I never, I was raised outside of church. But most of the people here went to church. And 
I believe we need to continue that. We mustn't forget about the next generation. There's beautiful children that need the seed of the Word of God to be sown into them. And even if we just give one Sunday morning in six or eight weeks, if you can help with this, we have a thriving, awesome children's ministry. You'll be put as an assistant. We're not going to throw you in the deep end. We'll put you in as an assistant. You'll be trained. You will learn how to do it. But if you'd like to do this, please raise your hand so we can just get a show of hands. Wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. There's somebody. There's somebody. Can somebody just take these names down, please? 